Hello, 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 everybody. What's going on? Let me fix this. Okay, it won't fix, so let's hide it. <laughs> How's everybody doing? It's me, your girl, Jenny Weaver, and I just got to Atlanta for the groan tonight. I'm super excited, but come on in and let me know who's on here. If this is your first time watching, let me know that you're a first timer so I can greet you. And I'm going to be talking to you guys today and this whole month really about prayer. So if you are saying, you know what, I would really like my prayer life to be powerful. I want to learn how to pray and have my prayers move mountains. I want to have prayers that open up heavens. I want to have prayers that I know God's hearing. If that's you, then you need to stay on this live. You need to make sure that you're watching me all month long as I talk about resetting our prayer life, resetting my prayer life. And so I'm going to be praying with you guys. I'm going to be giving you some scripture. I'm going to give you some teaching that I believe is going to help you going into the next year, I believe that it was strategic by the Holy Ghost for the Lord to put this in my spirit to release. And so I'm super excited. Uh, if you're on here right now, let me know where you're watching from. You guys, I am here in Atlanta, Georgia for the groan. The groan is tonight and tomorrow night. And so make sure that you are watching. Make sure that you sign up so that you can I get the link. We email you the link, the time. You don't have to worry about when is it, da, 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 all this stuff. It's going to be emailed to you and you'll have your link sent straight to your email. So make sure that you sign up and you can go to thegrown.global. Thegrown.global. And I'm going to try to put up a link really quick. Uh, I see everybody jumping on. Listen, you guys hit share, hit share, hit share. Share this with your friends and your followers. Um, everybody on Facebook, the three little buttons right there, click that, click share, and put it on your page. Share it with everybody that you know and say, it's time that we learn how to pray effectively. Amen? Amen. All right. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Gina Barron. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Bernitha. Happy birthday, Bernitha. Uh, let's see. Goldie's on here. Teresa's on here. Unique. I love that name. I love that name so much. It's very unique. <laughs> I'm corny. Sorry. All right. And so I'm not going to be on here long, but I do want to um, come on and share my heart with you guys as all of you are sharing this video and you're getting your hearts uh, and your spirits prepared for what I believe the Lord is going to release this month. By the end of this month, we're all going to be able to say, my prayer life has been reset. My prayer life is has gone to the next level. My prayer life has grown. And so there's nobody on Facebook, there's nobody that's a Christian, there's nobody in the world that can say, I don't need to come up in this area. We all have room to grow in this area, amen? And so I'm gonna be talking to you today about, uh, well, we did this one yesterday, so I'm gonna just go ahead and review it for our, a lot of my students are on. Yes, happy birthday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm talking about discipline. How many of you would say right now, I'll, I'll be honest and say, if, I want you to type this, I need to be more disciplined when it comes to prayer. Who is gonna be honest enough to type that in and say, I need to be more disciplined when it comes to prayer. That's me, that's me, that's me. Type in that's me if that's you. And hello, hello, hello. I am going to pray for people. Um, it's super excited about tonight, so I'm just really stirred up right now. I feel the Holy Ghost already moving in the name of Jesus. So how many people can say, I need my prayer life to be more disciplined? So I'm going to read you a little snippet, and this again is from my brand new, hot off the press book, Resetting My Prayer Life. I love this cover. It's got a little reset kind of thing going on here, and... It's going to cover 21 days of resetting your prayer life. And you're going to get teachings. You're going to get scriptures. You're going to get daily activations, assignments, questions, and then journaling papers so that you can do all your work right here in the book. So this is an amazing tool. Um, 
you could even get the e-course. We're all taking that right now. A lot of my students are on here. Look at everybody saying that's me. Jesse said that's me. Tara said that's me. Megan said that's me. Yes, Lisey said I need to be more disciplined. We all have room to grow in this area. So it's not a mistake that you're on here today. It's not by chance that you just click play. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. You, right there. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and he is wanting you to grasp this so that you can come up in prayer, so that you can carry the weight of heaven when you pray, so that you can move mountains when you pray, so that there are no nothing in your life that is actually hindering your prayers. And believe it or not, I list several things in this book that the Bible says hinders prayers. You could be doing this thing and, and be praying and praying and praying going, why is this not happening? And you could actually be doing something you had no clue that was actually hindering your prayers. So I really, really, really want you guys to get this. They were all, if you, if you ordered um, last week, they were all sent out to you. So they're in the mail. The foundation of a prayer life is discipline coupled with desire. Now here's the thing, I want, I want to explain this to you guys. Do you know that people can have a disciplined prayer life and no relationship with the Lord? You can have a prayer life where you get up early every single day, you pray several times a day, you go to prayer meetings, you know, you know, all, you know everything to pray, you know all the words, they, they have it down packed, but it's void of a true relationship. They're doing it as a check Oh, check. Oh, I can pray. Oh, I can pray for two hours. Oh, I can pray for three hours. Oh, I can pray this. Oh, I can pray the house down. But they're void of relationship. So you can't have discipline if you don't have desire. You have to desire the Lord. That's why in Matthew 6, 33, he says, seek first, what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things are going to be added into you. You have to seek God. If you're not seeking God, you're not going to find him. Somebody type that in. If you're not seeking God, you're not going to find him. Amen? So every day, God's calling us to seek him. Every day, he's calling us to get our prayer life in order because this is a way that he communicates with us. This is a way that he builds relationship with us. This is a way that he speaks with us. We speak to him. This is our primary way of communicating with the Lord. So when people don't have a passionate, stable secure prayer life i'm thinking to myself if i if they don't have that most likely they are not walking in the fullness of what god's called them to do you may be walking in a portion of it but certainly not the fullness because this is how we communicate with the lord ooh ooh i feel it i feel it i feel it can anybody say amen to that anybody want to say amen 175 of you on here go ahead and click that share click those three buttons share this with everybody you know we all need to level up when it comes to our prayer life I'm going to talk to you today about being disciplined in your prayer life. This is not a topic that people are running around going yes I can't wait to be disciplined that's not what people are doing it's not something that your flesh is going to want it's not a a pleasure for people we're not going i cannot wait to crucify my flesh every single day i cannot wait to get up early and 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 sacrifice sleep i cannot wait to restructure my agenda my schedule around prayer most people are not doing that but if you begin to do that coupled with a desire to know the lord it's a desire to know the Lord and a self-discipline, which is a fruit of the Spirit. If you do those things, you're going to have a powerful prayer life. And if you have a powerful prayer life, every other aspect of your life will be powerful. Can anybody say amen to this right now? Can anybody say amen? So, Janice Cars, yes, right. She said, if you're not seeking God, you won't find him. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, oh, oh. When you become disciplined in your prayer life, you become strengthened as a believer. You are able to face problems easier than someone who is not disciplined in their prayer life. Hear me out. People, people look at me and they go, how could you just go through that situation? I would have been a mess on the floor. They go, how can you face that and not 
be in a puddle of tears right now? Why do you still have a smile on your face? Why are you able to still go and minister and all those things that have happened and you're still able to get right back up? Because my prayer life, my communication with the Lord is stable. It's there. I desire to speak with the Lord. So when you see someone with an on fire, passionate prayer life, they're able to conquer problems that would get anybody else, that would have anybody else stumble. Come on. Come on. This is why being disciplined in that. When you go, Lord, I want a better prayer life. And then you just move on with your day. There's no action. There's no discipline. There's no sacrifice. There, you're doing nothing. You think that the prayer life is all of a sudden going to drop in your lap one day and you're going to wake up and go, wow, I'm going to pray. I'm going to press in every day from this point on. It's not going to happen like that. You have to take the first steps. Come on, somebody. That's why one of the fruit of the spirits is self-discipline, not Holy Ghost force discipline, not Jesus is going to come and force you to your knees and get you up and force you to pray. That's not, that's not how it works. It's a self-discipline, meaning I make myself be disciplined in this area. Oh my God, people aren't sharing this like they need to be. Why aren't y'all sharing this? Do you not like this word? Is it, is it not good? I feel like it is good. Come on, Ken. Yes, she says, prayer has kept me anchored. Come on. Listen, Jesus gave us a beautiful example of a disciplined prayer life when he walked the earth. Everything Jesus did, he was saying, do like me. Come on, do like me. The Bible gives us several accounts where he would, what, get up early. He would leave the crowds of people and go be by himself. This was after ministering. This was after ministering to crowds and crowds and hundreds and thousands of people. Jesus would all of a sudden slip out, go, go up to the mountain, go be quiet by himself to pray. Because when you are ministering, when you're walking with the Lord, when you're a mom, when you're a dad, when you're, when you're doing anything, you have to take time to communicate with the Lord. He said, I'm about my father's business. How in the world did he know his father's business? He's here on earth, father's in heaven. How did he know the father's business? Because he was in communication with his father. So he was able to hear from the Lord every single day. The crowds did not move him. Prophetess Silanda, I love you so much. Thank you for being on my Facebook Live. I need to screenshot this. I feel privileged enough to just stop and acknowledge you. I love you so much. But Jesus was not moved by the crowds. He didn't let them just applaud him after he ministered. Oh, that was a great service. Oh, that was so wonderful. Oh, they, he didn't do that. He slipped out. He slipped out and he went and prayed. He went and communicated with the Lord. Here's another thing. I want you all to write this. Prayer is not a one-way communication. Prayer is not, okay, here we go. Rub the, rub the lamp. I wish for new house, new car, new husband, better this, better that, give me a job, open this door, da da da, thank you genie, and then you're out the door. The devil is a whole liar. I'm, I, listen, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We have to understand that this is a privilege. It's an honor to come before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and to be able to speak with the Creator of the universe, the uncreated one, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. This is a privilege. And so when you pray, make sure that you're not the only one that's bah, 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 bah. stop and listen, because believe it or not, the Lord speaks. How do you think the earth was created? The Lord is a speaking God. He's a communicating God. You may not hear an audible voice break into your room, you may not hear that, but I'm telling you, the Lord has many ways of speaking to us. The question is not, is the Lord speaking to me? The question is, am I listening? Thank y'all for sharing this. Come on, come on. Am I listening? So in prayer, I want somebody to type, type this. If you have not done it yet, I want you to communicate with me. When you pray, do you stop and wait for the Lord to speak? Do you have a conversation or is it just what you want 
And listen, it's not a condemning thing. This A lot of times, this is just how we are raised. We see it in the church. We pray, we end prayer, and we move on. But here, I'm talking about resetting your prayer life from my new book, Resetting My Prayer Life. You have to understand this. The Lord is speaking. I learned this when I was uh, doing 555 devotion time. That is something that I learned from Prophetess Yolanda Perry. And she she taught all the people that were in her mentorship and the people that were following her ministry. 555. What does that mean? Where you have five minutes of reading the word. You have five minutes of praying in the Holy Ghost. And then you have five minutes. This is back to back. Five minutes of not saying anything and writing whatever you hear the Holy Ghost saying. In that, it was the word, which is God speaking, speaking in tongues, which is the Holy Ghost speaking, and then writing what the Lord is speaking in your heart. But in all of that, although it looked like prayer, and it is, it's really opening yourself up to hear from the Lord every single day. Every single day. That's right, Lisey. Am I listening or am I just talking? Elizabeth said guilty. Hey, I've done it. I hate. I'll get up in the morning and be like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for life. And it's a good thing because I do want to thank the Lord. But then I just kind of run off with my day and I forgot, oh, you know what? I needed to get my instructions for today. What does the Lord actually want from my day? What is he saying about today? What is he imparting to my spirit today? What is he helping me avoid today? Come on. So Jesus, he got away from the people. He got away from ministry. He went to a quiet place and prayed. He was showing us by his actions what it looks like to have a passionate prayer life. Discipline is not something that people in the church are lining up to hear. They're not. You say, you're going to get blessings and favor and doors are opening. And like I did, uh, what I do last week, Amos 9, 13, your head's going to swim. The blessings are going to, that thousands and thousands and thousands of people will line up. Oh, I want that. I want that. Be disciplined in your prayer life. Uh, hmm. Doesn't it sound fun? It's not. But the rewards from knowing the Lord far exceed fun. Come on. Come on, Johanna King. Hey, listen, I want everybody to type this in. You need to hashtag this and put it on your Facebook page today. I want everybody to hashtag this. Hashtag this. Playtime is over. Playtime is over. A hit or miss prayer life is not what God called us to. What do I mean by that? One day you pray, the next day you forget. You pray on Sunday morning, and Monday and Tuesday you got too busy. Or, you know, you didn't feel like it. Or, believe it or not, people sometimes think this is a valid reason. They didn't feel good. I'm guilty as well, guys. I'm just telling you what I know what the Lord has laid on my heart. One day we pray, we do three days of prayer, and then we're like, I'm good, and then we don't, and then we, we kind of just squeeze God in real quick, a few minutes here, leftover time here, we move on with our day, we're just trying to do these check-off lists, listen, playtime is over, hashtag playtime is over, we're going to get a reset prayer life, going into 2020, people are going to know you by being a prayer warrior, they're going to start to message you and say, I need you to pray. Because you're going to begin to reset your prayer life. When you pray, you're not going to wonder, did God hear me? Am I doing something wrong where it's hindering my prayers? Come on, everybody needs to share this video. I can't, can't say it enough. Reset my prayer life. God has not called us to a hit or miss. The hit and miss season is over in the name of Jesus. You are coming out of that. I believe in this season, he's calling us to come up to the next level. Whether you pray every day, listen to me, whether you pray every day or you pray once a week, he's calling all of us, everybody in that, to come up. Even those of us that pray every day, he's, there's still another level. You have not arrived. Don't be like, I'm here. Then how are you going to go from glory to glory? Oh my. 
Let me give you some scripture so that the religious people said she she didn't read any scripture. So let's get let's get that done. You ready? Luke 3, 21. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, somebody say, while he was praying, heaven was opened. While he was praying, a lot of us forget that part when he was baptized. We just think he was baptized, he came out of the water, and the heavens opened up. But my Bible says in Luke 3.21 that he was baptized and came up praying. Jesus, have mercy on my soul. He came up praying. While he was praying, heaven opened. Heavens will open when you have a passionate, on fire, disciplined prayer life. Matthew 14, 23, after he sent the crowds away, bye family, bye Facebook, bye work, bye ministry time for now. Well, he sent the crowds away. He went up on a mountain to by himself to pray and when it was evening he was there alone he was there alone we got to learn how to pray one-on-one -on -one with the lord before we even get a prayer partner we have to learn this from the lord he didn't need prayer accountability partner listen all that's good i have that in this book i'm going to be teaching on that for this whole month but he had to know the lord for himself you don't get a prayer partner when you're in the car and you're about to get a, in a car wreck. You got to learn how to call on Jesus for yourself. You got to know how to plead the blood. My apostle was on a, on a flight. He was flying to uh, the Bahamas, I believe. This was last year, maybe even two years ago. And there was such turbulence on the, on the plane. He, he talks about this, um, that everybody in the plane began to panic. Really, they did. I thought the plane was going down. It was that bad. It was so bad that to this day, he doesn't, he doesn't really even like to talk about it. But hear me out. In that moment, he knew how to call on the name of Jesus. And the people that were in, his, in the group that traveled with him, they knew how to call on the name of Jesus. Sometimes you're going to have to just know in that moment how to get a prayer through. And you don't have time to pick up and do a prayer line call. You don't have time to get in a group message. You don't have time to jump on a Facebook live. You need the Lord now. And so this is why resetting your prayer life is so important. Listen, I know Christians that can worship for hours, but can't pray five minutes. Oh my God. I know Christians that can worship. You want to go to worship night? Oh, absolutely. Yes, let's go. Let's dance. Let's sing songs. And you know, I'm the first one there. So I'm not saying it's bad. But you say, let's go to a prayer meeting. Nah. You can worship, but you can't pray. How in the world are we even separating the two? That's another topic for another day. Because that's in here too. One more scripture, one more scripture, one more scripture, one more scripture. Let me do this one. Uh, Mark, Mark 6, 46. And after bidding them farewell, y'all see the pattern? Bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. Notice that when he prayed, he, he, a lot of times he went to the mountain. He liked to go up in his prayer life. He was showing us something there. Mm. Jesus absolutely knew the importance of prayer. I would go as far as to say this. It was the source of his power here on earth. Remember, prayer is not just listing off things that we want. It's a supernatural communication with our God, both hearing him as well as speaking to him. I give assignments in this. You have a lot of, well, three assignments and then questions. This is such a good, uh, just a good resource. If you need something every day where you can go, okay, you know what? I need to learn how to pray in the spirit. I need to learn how to intercede. That's in here. I need to know what's a prayer walk. What's anointing oil for? What's pleading the blood? What it, where does it come from? How do I use that? How do I place up the hedge of protection? You need to get this book. I'm going to pray for people today. 
and I wanted to, if you have questions I want to answer your questions as well uh, let me read what Megan just said she always writes good comments I'm being consumed lately by pressing into how God wants me to pray that right there is so good Megan you just said something we need to press into the Lord ask the Lord how do you want me to pray has anybody ever thought about that God how do you want me to pray how would you like for me to approach you how would you like for me to call on your name? Come on. So thank you, Father, for what you're doing already. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing already. Oh, God, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you that people are going to have supernatural encounters. And I believe that today, listen, if you're on here and you want to make a commitment today, you say, you know what? I want to commit. I believe that this was a divine appointment for me to watch this. You say, I want to commit to getting my prayer life reset. I want you to say, that's me in the comment. I want to pray for you. I want to pray over you. I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's a good question. What's a good prayer for sickness? Let me save that for another day. And I promise I am going to come back to that because that's a whole lesson in itself. And I do have that in here. Praying for sickness and I'm a firm believer let me just make it clear right now you're not going to be able to argue me out of this one I'm a firm believer in God heals absolutely it is his will I don't even believe in saying if it's your will heal me because why am I asking it if it's your will or even questioning what his will is when the Bible tells me it's his will Okay, I see we have someone that wants to get blocked. So let me go ahead and block him. See how easy that was? There we go. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. The devil is defeated. God is exalted. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that is a great question, Cheryl, and I am going to definitely address that. I feel like that would take a whole Facebook Live to do because a lot of times, um, and people are praying for that, they're not receiving because of the, the teaching, the doctrine, the mindset, and the belief structure that they carry. And so once you begin to open up their belief structure and show them in the Word of God that it's absolutely their portion is what God has given them, then all of a sudden they begin to receive the healing. Amen? In the book, is there a prayer for witchcraft? Not necessarily a specific prayer for witchcraft, but in the book, I'm going to cover how to get breakthrough. I cover binding and loosing. I cover spiritual warfare. And here's the thing. A lot of times you don't need a specific prayer to break. Um, like for instance, if I want to break witchcraft, I can pray the blood of Jesus. I can plead the blood of Jesus. I can speak the word of God into this situation. I can humble myself and submit and begin to uh, lay things at the feet of Jesus that maybe I was holding back. I can begin to confess any rebellion in my heart. And all of that is combating and breaking down the powers of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Amen. But so your question, to answer your question, no, not specifically, but I believe that if you get the book, you'll have enough ammunition to pray for any issue that you have going on amen let me pray for you because i'm going to go have lunch with my apostle yay and my tribe family is here kelton is here and anna uh jordan is here i'm super excited mama joy is here and so we are preparing for the groan tonight so father in the name of jesus i thank you god that you are helping each and every person understand that you are calling them to another level in prayer I thank you, God, that all complacency will break right now in the name of Jesus, that all laziness will break right now in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would begin to stir a deep desire. Oh, I thank you, God, that you begin to stir the fires of revival, the fires of intercession in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that we can no longer go back to how we used to do it. Oh, my God. I thank you, God, that you're moving us forward in you. 
in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for each and every person on here that says, I want to come up in my prayer life. I want to seek the Lord. My prayer life is not where it needs to be. God, I thank you for their honest confession. And now I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus to touch every single person, touch them from the top of their head and to the sole of their feet. God, I thank you that you're meeting their needs right now. And I thank you that you're pulling them into a season of deep intimacy where you are going to be the teacher, where you are going to be the mentor, where you are going to be the coach and you're going to lead them in the pathway that is straight. And I thank you, God, that you're doing it for each and every person on here right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for Raven. Thank you for Raven. I thank you, Father God, that you are helping her to understand intercession. I thank you, God, that you're even releasing a spirit of travail in her life where you'll begin to raven, you'll begin to travail, and you'll begin to cry out, and it won't even be a forced thing. There's no way that you could even work this up, but it will be a divine revelation of the Holy Ghost that will come upon you so strong. There will be nothing else that you can do but just begin to cry out. And think it not strange, even if you don't know the words that are coming out you don't understand it but God is going to begin to put pieces together you're going to begin to see things fall in line in the name of Jesus even people that you've been praying for for years you're going to be, see the hand of salvation in their life in the name of Jesus Father, we just thank you. We submit to you. We submit to your leadership. We submit to having our prayer life reset this day in the name of Jesus. For each and every person on here that needs a prayer for their health, I see your comment, Tracy. Prayers for health, healing, and strength right now. God, touch them in a mighty way. I command all sickness to go, all infirmity, all disease, all pain to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go now. And we loose the healing anointing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. I was teaching out of my new book, Resetting My Prayer Life. This is going to cover three weeks, 21 days of resetting your prayer life. You can you give it as a gift. Hey, listen, if I, was a, if I had some teenagers, I would order a whole bunch of these. Give them out to these teenagers. Because how many teenagers know how to plead the blood? How many teenagers know how to place the hedge of protection? They're going into these schools and they, they don't even know how to really pray for their friends. We need to teach them. Get this, get this, get this. Women's groups, men's groups. I know it's got the pink and the purple and that's okay though. Men, get this get, as a gift for somebody. Get it and even if you don't tell anybody that you got it, read it. <laughs> but get the book. Listen. The Grown is going to be powerful. Each and every one of you, you need to sign up. Go to thegrown.global. Sign up. We will see you tonight. It's going to kick off. It's going to be powerful. Apostle Ryan Lestrange has got a powerful word in his spirit. And I am excited about leading worship. I haven't led worship on Facebook in quite a while. I've really been saving it for The Grown. So <laughs> I want you all to join us tonight. And it starts at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. I pray to God I'm not wrong. Starts at 8 p.m. And make sure you go and you all tag me in your, your post. If you've got pictures of your groups meeting, I want to see your pictures. Make sure you write playtime is over. And hashtag playtime is over. Tag me in it. I want to see Facebook light up with everybody that's making a commitment. I'm getting my prayer life reset today. Playtime is over in Jesus' name. I love you. I will see you tonight. Bye-bye.